This may look like an ordinary group of ladies, but don't be fooled. These ladies had the power to make Debbie happy or unhappy, and therefore make me happy or unhappy. But it was a good day. The stars and the moon must have lined up correctly. They liked the relief. They released us to move forward and make molds, and therefore Debbie is very, very, very happy. Good morning. It's the last day of January. 2019, and as you can see, this first panel of St. Francis of Assisi is now on the table, and today we will make a rubber mold it's worth a thousand words. So what's the process? At any rate, the process is to paint, to mix parts A and B, and paint thin layers of the rubber on to the surface of the relief. What are you spraying? I'm spraying a release agent so that the rubber doesn't stick to the clay. And this clay is very waxy, so it really doesn't need a tremendous amount of release. So I have a couple of friends coming today who will help me, Rainy Clark and Fred Moore. And we will, by the end of the day today, hopefully we will have the rubber portion of this mold complete. So the rubber we're using is two part and you mix it together. You probably have a 15 minute life in the cup before it starts getting sticky and gummy. Um, first coat, obviously the goal is to make sure there's no bubbles or no uncovered spots. And then after that, the um, succeeding coats are to give it some thickness and some strength and to try to make sure we cover all the verticals. It's really hard. This stuff really wants to run on vertical surfaces. So you just got to keep going over it and over it and over it. So the last few coats, we put a lot of uh, polyfiber thickener in it, and this helps keep it in place on the vertical surfaces until it sets up to make sure we have coverage everywhere and no spots too thin. Okay, good afternoon. This morning, four of us mixed a lot of rubber, and we applied uh, basically five coats, uh, the last two of which were just real, real thick on the high points where the rubber tends to run off of the, uh, off of the high points. And uh, we did it in about six hours. It took six hours to make this rubber. So the next morning I'm trimming the rubber back with a knife, trying not to cut my hand off. Um, this is to make a flat spot for the um, support for the mother mold. And wherever the rubber was on top of the clay, it came up easily, but wherever the rubber spilled onto the plywood table, it is very difficult to get off. The yellow rubber mold, when it's re removed from the um, original clay, will be very floppy, so it needs a support in order to pour up permanent one in it and um, it's called a mother mold and we use plastic um, two-part plastic and in order to keep from using 400 pounds of plastic I build a wooden frame um, to support the plastic therefore like the rubber the plastic can be in a thin layer the plastic is going to be about three-eighths of an inch more or less um, so we have a combination here of thin rubber, we have thin plastic, and then we have a wooden framework. And this is just to make the thing more manageable weight-wise and to save money. These products are very expensive. We applied the plastic with lots of thickener. We applied it in two layers. And unlike the rubber, we don't have to have 100% coverage. Um, we just need support for the rubber, like 90% of the spots. And we don't have to have 100% contact with the little um, support framework. We just need enough contact so that the thing doesn't change shape when we flip it over and pour the relief in the middle. We told ourselves we were going to allow a full um, two days cure on the rubber and the plastic to make sure that we weren't going to shoot ourselves in the foot and distort something. But we did manage to wait like 24 hours and here we go, we're taking it apart. I had some screws holding the frame in place on the table so it wouldn't move around. I had some screws up from the bottom of the table to pull the relief flat to the table. We got all that off. And I put a bunch of screws in the back of the frame of the relief because there was nothing to grab on to pull it out. So 
here we have the crowbars and we're we're pulling and thanks to the clay that Debbie applied to the edge of the relief to the edge of these boards it came out fairly easily moment of truth here you get to look at the mold looks good you got a good mold oh wow so what you're doing now i am removing little tiny pieces of clay because if i don't pick them out they'll end up in the cast in the four ton mg so it's a little tedious but I'm so happy that the mold looks good and we got it off, just the two of us, and uh, didn't break our backs. This is the hanger for the um, reliefs. I welded up three pairs. This part will go against the wall, be screwed to the wall, and it has eight little I don't know what you call them, clips that stick out. And those will catch onto the back of these eight little pieces of metal. This whole frame will be embedded in the back of the relief. So they're in pairs and they were made together. So theoretically, every single one of these should bear some weight from every single one of those. So the weight will be divided into eight equal places. Practically speaking, if six of them touch, I'll be happy. The hanging frame that's going to be embedded in the back of the relief I have in position, and I have supports clamped to it, and I have it shimmed to the right uh, depth or height, or however you want to call it. So I will move this. We'll put the first two layers of 4 ton MG, and then we can drop it into place, and the last layer of 4 ton MG. Or the, la or the last two layers, the ones that have the um, fiberglass fibers in it, will embed these angles. We'll attach these angles, this angle here, this angle here, and these little tabs. They will become one with the relief. So this frame and this relief will become one. So that will enable us to hang it on the other piece, which will be screwed to the wall. Okay, you ready? Good morning. It is February the 5th, a Tuesday morning, and we're going to cast the first of the three panels today. We have a good rubber mold, which we made last week, and it's all cleaned and sprayed with release agent, and we're ready to go. So, we're casting in a product called 4-Ton MG, and it is a modified gypsum, which is the reason for the MG. It, it consists of four components. The first is, and the bulk of it, is this HydroCal FGR95 uh, product by U.S. Gypsum. So that's the bulk of it. Added to that are two other ingredients, a polymer and a hardener. And then once those dry ingredients are mixed, that's called your dry blend, the the uh, FGR95, a polymer, and a hardener in set quantities. Uh, if you have 10 pounds of FGR95, you, ha you add one pound of polymer and 22 grams of hardener. Good morning, Rainy. Here comes my Rainy. Here she comes. Um, then you add uh, half as much liquid 
It's called what? VF812. This is uh, referred to as milk. It's a white liquid. And that's what you mix and then you apply it. You, you apply it in layers, thin layers, until it's about three-eighths of an inch thick. Okay. Applying the Fortin MG can be kind of tedious. It's real liquidy at first, and, and it wants to sit in the bottom of all the recesses, but you got to keep pulling it up to the vertical surfaces, like the edges and around the figures, and you can't just leave it because it kind of gets hard all of a sudden, so you just paint and you paint and you paint, and it finally thickens up. Uh, we did two coats like that, and then we dropped a frame in. It's hanging from these little boards, and we mixed uh, the third coat has fiberglass fibers mixed with it. That makes it really strong. And then when the third coat sets, I, I remove the boards, and we're getting ready to put a fourth coat, which would be the finish, the final coat, except for the vertical around the edges. We wanted it extra strong because that's what we're going to be probably grabbing when we're handling this thing and sliding it in and out the truck. And we just wanted to make sure that this edge wasn't going to crack. So we went ahead and put a fifth and final coat on this edge. And when this all sets up, I'll have to get the grinder and trim all these sharp, jagged corners so we don't impale ourselves with this fiberglass. We're doing a test run on the hanging bracket and you got to use your imagination a little bit. This will be screwed to the wall and then the relief will be placed against the wall about an inch higher than it needs to be and when it is low, when the relief is lower down it will hang on every single one of these brackets. It really fits really good. All eight of them touch. So pretty happy with that. What I'm going to do now is take measurements from the bracket to the top of the relief and from the bracket to the side of the relief so when we get to the hospital we can just screw the bracket to the wall we'll know where it needs to go we can use these measurements to center the bracket on the niches and we don't have to do two or three trial fits of the uh, heavy relief we can should be a one and done that's the goal so it's time to remove the finish cast from the mold. Um, one of three things will most likely happen. Uh, first thing is the cast can just come loose on the rubber and just lift right out. The second thing would be that the cast will stick to the rubber and the cast and the rubber will come out of the mother mold. And the last thing is that the, the cast will break into a million little pieces and it'll just fall on the floor. Hopefully it'll be one of two. Um, this is always difficult. It's, uh, you know, it doesn't have unlimited strength, but it's really hard to break it free. So we just kind of worked back and forth and back and forth. Um, probably should have had some more help besides me and Debbie, but we got it free. It came out with the rubber attached, which is no big deal. Um, when we got it free, we slowly dragged it across out of the uh, mother mold and onto the adjoining table. And we, and that, at that point, the face of the of the cast is kind of exposed because it's face down and it's no longer in the big mold, but it was in the rubber. But anyway, we put a big piece of foam rubber on top of the other table and just laid it there. And then we were kind of stuck until uh, Fred came by. We needed some more muscle. I had been to the foundry and built a little um, frame like a sheetrock dolly so we could put it on a dolly and roll it out. So when Fred came, we stood it up vertically on the dolly. Uh, we were able to remove the rubber mold. We brought it outside where I did a bunch of grinding because those little fiberglass whiskers that are encased in that four-ton MG, kind of deadly. So I did a lot of grinding, got the back. It's not smooth, but it's no longer um, scary put the rubber mold back into the mother mold so it wouldn't distort and we will put this away in the at the foundry somewhere and probably never use it again but moving the relief the first panel first of three out the doors into the cruel light of day Fred showed up just in the nick of time Oh, 
phone, but we're going to put it face down. So no okay. Problem. What are you doing down there? I'm checking for uh, thin spots. You can see the light through uh, the thin spot. And then she fetches them. So we're with the edges cleaned up of the little sharpies and the back kind of cleaned up of sharpies and the thin spots patched. It's time to bring it back into the studio, put it back on the easel where it will stay until all the other two are complete. And then Debbie will put a patina on all three of them at the same time. Yeah. 